And welcome to the big kickoff League of Ireland Sports Bar with myself, Roy Shanahan, uh, joined by Nathan Doyle and Dara Marquis. That little one in the end, maybe we'll maybe we'll change it back. But we know you're all right there, aren't you? It makes us look very impressive here. <laughs> How are you, Dara? Yeah, all yeah. good, all good. How are you? Brilliant, brilliant. Um I suppose we we'll get st stuck straight into it because it's a Dara Markey who's playing for Drogheda United and not St. Pat's anymore, and it's a it's a totally different uh, different ball game. You've made a decent start this year. It, it's what have you got? You're in fourth, twenty two points, six wins, only four defeats. It's a really good start for us. Yeah, it's been great. Uh, probably we've done better than we expected at the start of the season so far. Um, we've kind of built a bit of a gap already between the bottom two teams, so. That's obviously our main aim, uh, avoiding relegation. So, so far we've done that. We've probably had the easier games in this round so far. We've got a tough run coming up now, uh, between now and the next round. So, uh, hopefully we can keep building on that gap, but we know it's, it's going to be really hard. So, um, yeah, we just need to try and keep picking up points. Okay, now I'm going to get you all back in here. Hold on now. Let's see if we can get us all in. Oh, there we yeah. go. I think, that, I think that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? So we'll leave it at that, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Um, I suppose the team has a lot of new faces. You're one of them, so you can't really say uh, what the difference is. But how did it just gel so easily? Because it doesn't always work. You see it so many times. You get a whole load of new players. You just don't gel. How do you think you gel so quickly? Uh, well, I think that uh, Tim had kept on a lot of the players from last season so and they're all really good players you know so and they all get on really well so kind of momentum was already there kind of coming in from their league win last year so uh it was kind of just easy then for us to come in and kind of just add a bit more to the to the squad and obviously the lads are really welcoming and stuff like that and that helps and like when you get on well off the pitch it, it makes a real difference on the pitch, like can't be under underestimate how much that makes a difference in on the pitch. Like, um, and we're all good mates, you know. So, uh, I think that's it. And then obviously we've trained hard in pre-season, and I think pre-season we had a, a really good uh, run of games, and we done really well. And just kind of, I suppose sometimes it just it just does click, and uh, it's just the way football is. You kind of build build chemistry with certain players and stuff like that, and. Uh, yeah, it's gone really well so far. But as I've said, it's like it's really early days. So um, we just need to keep on trying to improve every week. And I, th I think we can do that. Like there's potential there to be a really good team. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. I know it's... Hey, um, go ahead. Like we were saying about the squad, they're uh, for, for like, for a newly promoted side as well. The strength and depth has been absolutely brilliant. You know, you have to just look at the bench uh, that, that you have and some of the lads is brought on. So if you consider, you know, the squad is already hard and like you came into the club, Gary Deegan came into the club, there's that bit of extra quality there now this season. What was the goal at the start of the season? Was it just to avoid relegation or were you thinking bigger? Because realistically, with the lads that you have there at the moment, you see where you are now and it's probably not a major surprise to a lot of people. Uh, well, no, to be honest, we our main goal was to avoid the bottom two and it still is and I think after probably this run of games, uh, we'll probably, depending on where we are, we'll probably re-look at things and maybe then we'll reset our goals. But just coming up from from uh, the first division, obviously the, the main aim is always to uh, to stay stay in the league. And um, obviously it's it's a really good squad and like the young, even the young lads that are coming on are, are making a difference and they're making a name for themselves now as well. So. People kind of probably underestimated that. Like maybe we didn't have much strength and depth, but uh, their young lads are, are really fully ready to come in, and they as if they've showed they've made a difference. Like Jordan Adiemo scoring goals, James Clark yeah. and Killian as well. Phillips, Killian Phillips have started a lot of games. So um, yeah, so we've got a lot of strength and depth, and obviously there's a lot of experience, like a lot of winners in the team. So nobody wanted to have a, a relegation on their CV. So of course, that was our main goal, and I think, as I've said, we'll we'll reassess that probably halfway through the season and see how we're getting on. Definitely, we uh, we slagged you a little bit before about your goal scoring, uh, I suppose tallies. 
you've got off a goal off early enough in their 14 games so far. How do you think your performance has been? And uh, I personally, I said to you before, I think you've looked sharp. I think you've, you've, you've looked busy as well. And not just for busyness sake, you've actually been uh, important to the team as in linking it from midfield into the, into the, into the forward places. Have you felt that you're playing better? Uh, how, how do you assess your, your form? Yeah, I've had a good start to the season. I think goals was I've had chances, you know, and that's I, I should have put more away, to be honest. So I suppose once I'm getting the chances, that's the main thing. Obviously, you need to, to start putting them away and stuff like that. But hopefully that comes. But I feel like I'm still helping the team really well. And um, there's a lot of competition in the team. So obviously, you've got to, you've got to keep, even in training, you've got to keep your performance really high. And... Um, yeah, happy enough so far, and hopefully you can keep improving as more game time comes. So obviously, I haven't. I've probably been in and out of a team for a long time in previous seasons. So I'm just really enjoying it at the minute, just becoming a, a fully established player in the league again, and just building confidence. And as the main thing is just just get back and join. It. And like I can't complain at the minute. Just it's been really good so far. Yeah. Um, Killian has sent in a message. He says, "What's it like to work under Tim and Kevin at Drogheda?" Yeah, really. you have to say. Obviously, you have to say great things about them. So <laughs> yeah. you, you touched that a little bit, Killian. How does how did they compare to other managers that you've worked uh, all the way through? Even you know a, a, any sort of underage coaches and stuff. Yeah, they're just two really nice, really nice coaches. Like and like, obviously. It's just been a bit of a breath of fresh air, I suppose, coming into training and, and, and everyone's just in great mood. Obviously, um, results help that and the morale is really high when you come in after a win. It's obviously different when you come in after a defeat, but like um, two, just two nice nice men first and foremost. And then on the on the pitch, they, they know what they're talking about as well. Obviously, Tim's recruited really well and uh, Kevin's a big part of that as well. So. Um, yeah, it's just been a breath of fresh air with them so far, and uh, hopefully that continues. Are they hands on in the coaching sessions? What way does that work? Yeah, they both take and they they both come in and and uh, say what they need to say and and some good points all the time, and then pretty much like shape and stuff like that. We'd always be well prepared for games, so um, yeah, both both have a, a big say in everything and. Sean Brennan's there as well, who who helps as well. So three really good coaches, and um, I think it's shown at the minute with the team how how they're playing. Uh, you were obviously with Pats for a good long while. Um, what have you learned from St. Pats that you're now bringing into your game? I suppose at Drogheda, because you're always learning, and when you move on to another club and you look back. You may look back at things that maybe you could have improved on. Maybe you didn't listen. I don't know. But what did? You, what do you think you brought to Drogheda from Pats? Uh, probably uh, position wise, where where to be and how to hold your position and be disciplined. I suppose uh, on the pitch, don't go running all over the place at times, which uh, which can be easily done. So. Uh, and other other stuff as well. I had some great coaches at Pats, obviously. So uh, you learn a lot, and obviously the um, tempo that that you train that every day, full time, full time team. You're you're just you're always match ready. Then you know. So I think I've adapted to a different a different tempo. Uh, from obviously when I stepped up from 19s, it was just completely different tempo, and I, I've just kind of got experience then as well. Uh, where to be on and off the ball uh, defensively and, and offensively as well. Uh, just a lot of things. And um, I suppose for a young lad, I've got a, a fair bit of experience. So that, that's probably been, been the main advantage so far. Yeah. Now you say a young lad, all right? I, 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 looked at, I, I went, oh my God, he's 24 now. And he's yeah. like, yourself to get to that mid 20s. So what, what do you see? Like, Darren Markey, what do you see? Like, do you go home um, when you're not? training uh, do you do your extra training try and build yourself up try and you know are you trying to push yourself on or are, are, you, are you happy with your lot you know because you see a lot of t players who are just happy with their lot and play their way through the league of ireland 
Um, you see so many players now able to touch on that Republic of Ireland squad. Nothing is impossible. So are, they, are those the kind of things that you would think about? Well, I, I do. I, I do all the extras and I, I do uh, I do a lot of gym stuff and stuff like that. So I do give myself the best chance. Uh, but as I've said this year, I've not really, I've, I've stopped thinking of them things probably. So this year is just for me is to just be getting back and join it. Uh, and that's, that's the main thing. Uh, and then hopefully as you keep improving and, and stuff like that, then you can start thinking of, of the bigger things. But as I said, I give myself the best chance to do that and I'll do all the extras always for as, as long as I can. And, and then in a few years' time, maybe I'll have to re reevaluate that and look into other things as well. But um, no, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going for as long as I can and, and give myself <laughs> a chance. Good. Um, and like Roy was touching on there, actually, Dara, as well, uh, we're, I, I will admit as well, I'm, I'm a St. Pat's fan, so I've, I've watched you play for a number of years, even in the 19s, and then coming up in 2015, making a debut and everything. It's... Um, so it's probably easy to still see yourself as that young lad, but do you see your role even changing in in the background? You know, in the in the dressing room or in, on the training pitch, do you still see yourself as a young lad? Are you starting to step up now a little bit into a bit of a not senior position, but you know, you, you've been around the block now. You know, you've been successful. You, you you've won uh, three trophies at St. Pat's Day at Jordan your time. So are you starting to you know see that change a little bit? You know, you, you're sort of taking some young lads under your wing, maybe. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a different role now, for sure. I think maybe a pass I was probably seen as a young lad for a long time when, when I, I know I wasn't myself. Um, yeah. So, as I've said, like I'm 24 now, but I have a, a good bit of experience for a 24-year-old still. So, uh, like I'm just bringing that now into trying to help. As I've said, there's a lot of young lads at Drogheda and they're talented. So, do my best to help them and, and try, try to improve them as well. And bring things to train and like high tempo and stuff like that, which help, can help them adapt their game as well and, and just give them advice and stuff like that. So uh, it's definitely a different role, I'd say, because there's, there's much more experienced players at Pats than, than I was. Um, so now it's, it's just, I've probably got one of the, one of the higher uh, bit of experience of the squad in the Premier Division. So in the draw had a side compared to when I was at Pats, it, it wouldn't have been like that. So, it's just um, trying to bring that to the younger lads, I suppose, and trying to help them and everyone else, I suppose, too. Um, you are, are, I always keep an eye out for how you're doing, obviously, because uh, you're uh, local to me, but uh, you're not our favourite player. Uh, James Brown, uh, I feel good. <laughs> You cannot. Uh, what a man. What a man. Uh, he's actually playing out of his skin, isn't he? Like, I mean, for me, his level is. Well, for me, I think he can go further. I think he's an unbelievably really yeah. good footballer. I think he's similar age to yourself, uh, but his 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 work rate up and down the pitch and his quality up and down the pitch, defensively as well, because you see a lot of attacking fullbacks who aren't as good uh, going back, but he's a good player. Now I've spoken up. Uh, do you want to kick him down or do you want to, uh, you know... Give him the thumbs up. What, what way? <laughs> what way do you see him in the team? And uh, d d is he is he as good as I think he is? Yeah, yeah. Because I think I said it to you even in January when I was talking to you that after a few games in pre season, I knew how good he was going to be, uh, and that he was going to have a big year uh, and make a name for himself. I think even in pre season, he scored a few goals, and um, obviously coming in from Pats and then in, into. I obviously didn't know a lot of the lads, so I was like, I was really surprised by how good these lads were. Just and, and obviously I wasn't surprised then by the fact the team kept so many of them because they're all so good. And James Brown's has been uh, uh, probably the pick of pick of them up, uh, pick of the lads so far. And as you said, there's he can definitely go forward because he's got he's got everything he's got the athleticism and and the quality on the ball as well and. Uh, he's got the attitude for it as well, so um, hopefully he stays a drawer for for a long time. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, you've seen the likes of Shane. 
Seamus Coleman, who's gone, and he hasn't gone really young, but he he could he could go across. You've got the likes of you know Ian Wright, who went and played at a uh, an, a young age or a, an older age, in around your your age, 23, 24, before he got into the highest uh, football. And and there's so many like that that there's no reason why players from the League of Ireland can't go across. You look at Wes Hulahan even Wes Hulahan took a little bit of time before he went yeah. and played across the water. So it's it, it, there's always that opportunity. I know you, what you're saying focus on what you're doing now and then the rest of it will take care of itself uh, but you definitely can see the players so when you look here's Killian has something here um a, a good question have you learned much from the likes of Gary Deegan and, and Dame Massey since they've come in this season because there is a lot of quality and there is a lot of qualities to learn from players yeah exactly you can't you can't stop learning in football uh and they're really they're two really experienced players they've had good careers so um Gary Dig, my playing kind of central with him, so he's always telling you um, position wise what to do and stuff like that. And uh, he's a bit of a leader on the pitch, uh, vocal and stuff. So it's probably something that that we need in there. And Dan Massey, obviously, who's had a great career at Dundalk, he's he's uh, chipped in with a few great free kicks as well. Yeah, Scored into Beckham. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So and two really nice nice lads as well. So. Uh, always learning from from these lads and uh really good players as well so everyone's they're just uh everyone's just chipping in with their own bit i suppose at the minute and, and it's contributing to the team and helping us do well yeah uh you went didn't you go across to celtic at one stage did you yeah. what, what, did, what do you learn from them type, type of experiences i know i probably asked you about this before it wasn't on this show but what do you learn from those type of experiences? Because there's so many I've seen. I probably can think of now five players who went across the war. Or, uh, I know you went on trial, but five players went across the war, came back and and just gave it up. Um, you've probably seen those type of players as well. So, how do you go across there and take you know maybe a little bit of disappointment away? Although yours probably wasn't that long, was it? It was, it was a shorter trial, I think. How do you take those disappointments away and then just keep at it? Yeah, um, I, th I had a few trials at different places and they were only a week long. I think the Celtic one was only even two days long. I played a game and I, think I'm, I don't even think I'd done a training session. I was there for two days and one day I, I didn't do anything. I just, just rested in the hotel. Uh, well, yeah, they're, they're a good experience, of course. Like As I've said, like you're always learning about, about football and you go to these places and you see what it's like to be at a full-time club. Obviously, League of Ireland, it's a different level to League of Ireland where you're at Celtic. It's one of the biggest clubs in, in Europe, I suppose. Uh, and just the facilities are just next level and stuff like that. And, um, really good, talented players there as well, of course. But I don't know if, if it's the right route, to be honest, to go at a young age. And I, I've seen a lot of lads come... As you said, I've seen a lot of lads come home and they're not playing anymore. When I look back to my age group at PDSL, there's all the main players, I suppose, who have big names. A lot of them aren't playing now, you know. So uh, it just goes to show that sometimes you just don't you don't develop over there or something like it. it's it's probably better to be at home with your family and the League of Orleans, it's at a high standard now, you know. So and there's a good pathway yeah. there. So I'm sure a lot of people say these things now and I don't know if that, that route was around back back when I was under sixteen, under fifteen, but it's definitely there now and uh you know, for sure I think it's it's something that should be done and even the degree thing, like scholarships and stuff like that are there as well now. So it's always good to have when like um even myself, like I was full time football last year and you're going part time now, and I've got a degree now where I can probably look and get a part time job as well. Uh, if I didn't have that degree, I don't know what I, what I would have done. So, lads coming home from England where they've they've got nothing as well. So it's it's tough, and it's probably it's probably not a surprise that a lot of them stop playing because it's just it's really disheartening, you know. So, um, it's it is tough. So. I, de I definitely recommend the uh, League of Ireland route for sure. 
Yeah, and yeah. I think there's a lot more people who are going down that route. And I think Brexit will make sure that people stay yeah. here longer as well. I think that could be a good thing for the League of Ireland uh, without having to see that. Any clubs this year that have surprised you? Any players that you've played against that have surprised you in in, in, a, in a good way? Um, maybe, I think Finn Harris have been, yeah. been quite good this year. The, compared to last year's where you'd go up there and you, you'd be dreading it. Like, we went up there a few weeks ago and the pitch was in great nick. And, you know, they play a lot more football now as compared to a few years ago where it'd be a really scrappy game. The ball would be in the air all the time. But it was actually a really enjoyable game and the ball was on, on the deck now a lot for nearly the whole game. So... They've got some really good ball players in the midfield now where maybe a few years ago they, they wouldn't have and even up, up top they've got they've got good quality as well. So mm. uh, they've probably been been a surprise package, I'd say probably the biggest surprise package of, of the teams I've played against anyways. And um yeah, good to see because they're not enjoyable games. <laughs> well they weren't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, they do tend to have a reputation, don't you, of, of big bruisers and any like even myself as a Pats fan, the thoughts of even travelling up the Bally Buffet would, yeah, would, would, would give you a nightmare, it really would. Uh, unless you don't have to make it anymore, uh, I'm, a, I'm actually a Sligo native now myself, obviously, you know, you are travelling down to Sligo uh, to, to play this weekend. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what are you expecting now of that one? It'll be a tough game because they're obviously they're top of the league at the minute and they're flying, so they'll be full of confidence but uh, we're not we're not short on confidence at the minute either I think we played them up in Drogheda and gave them a great game probably should have won to be honest so um, I would, would, would go up and give 100% as we always do and try to give ourselves the best chance of, of getting tr getting three points as we go into every game to try and win so um, yeah we're not short on confidence but we know how tough a game it's going to be but as I said we'll give it 100 what is there one player in the league? If you had to pick one player, I suppose, what player would you take from another team to put into your team and why? Uh, I you said, can break it down. You can put, you can name three and then break <laughs> it down in your head. <laughs> I don't know. It's a tough one. Yeah. Um, I mean the Rovers midfield is obviously unbelievable. Um, yeah, yeah. So much good players there, um, and they'd all be be enjoyable to play. with. I suppose I'll keep the ball really well. I don't know. It's not really a, a pick of the players, to be honest. When you watch, so let's say when you watch Danny Mandrew playing, or you're you're playing on the pitch beside Danny Mandrew. When you watch him, are you learning from him? Are you thinking I'm as good as him? Are you thinking I love him and my team? What? What way do you look at, at Danny and think? Because a lot of people looked at him when he played for Bowles and they thought, listen, he's, he's there's great attributes here. He's, he's a really good player. He doesn't do it consistently enough. Um, I think he started well this year for Rovers. I think he, it, maybe the first or second game found, you know, didn't hit the ground running, but he was finding his feet. But since then, I think he's done really well. So when you see him out on the pitch, what's he like? Yeah, really good player and technically really good as well so he fits right into that into that Rovers team and he's won he's obviously he's won them a few games I think with, with match winning goals so um, he had big big boots to fill in Jack Bourne but he's done really well and he, he's won them games as I've said so uh, he's done he's done really well and he's, he's done his best so far and obviously there's a lot of pressure there on him but, but he's more than done enough so far so, and he's gone into the Ireland squad which is unbelievable and yeah. um, yeah, of course he's done really well, and you'd you'd enjoy playing with these sorts of players, of course. So you can't have enough players like that. Uh, technically good and score goals, win games. So um, yeah, but Rovers have plenty of them, as I've said, and the, there's a lot of them in the league. So um, yeah, it's hard to pick one or two yeah. players, you know. So um, yeah, you know, Nathan, you who you do start in Nathan for Pats. No, who would you slot in to the draw of the team? Oh, team. To the draw of the teams. Can't say Danny Mandrew, who'd only take Dara's place. 
<laughs> now you have me on the spot now as well. You have everybody on the spot here. Um, <laughs> oh, you need time to think on these things. Yeah, <laughs> can't you? Because I know I'm going to say someone now and then I'll be lying in bed all night like, oh, how would I feel about that? <laughs> Do you know what? Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll make a little pick for you, Dara. Uh, you and James Dillon, it seems that they be really close and pat. So I'll, I'll take James out, out of that lawn and bring him back up to the Premier Division where he belongs. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I was going to... It'd be hard to get <laughs> down here. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now we see him settling there now, doesn't he? Like in fairness, yeah. at Lowen, they, they've like, I've talked them up loads. I, I think they've they signed brilliantly well. Like James being one of the players that he brought in, and he's a smashing talent. So in fairness, they, they'd be another team, wouldn't he? You'd put in as a surprise package, and you, you've yeah. already talked about Finn Harps, but they've been excellent this season. They really have been. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's they've probably been struggling over the last few years, so it's it's good to see them doing well, and they've recruited really well. So. It probably isn't a surprise, like they've the names that they brought in. Uh, so you were probably looking at them at the start of the season, and um, you, you probably would have put them up there, anyways. But yeah, it's good to see see them doing well, anyways. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how, how they get on if they can keep it going. But uh, good to see because uh, there's a lot of good teams in that division. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is. it's absolutely stacked, and it's going to be this season. Uh, just want to go back for the second. We were talking about Danny Manju there, and he's Ireland call up. Like, even as a League of Ireland player, when you see a fellow League of Ireland player get a call up, is, is that that sense of pride, or is it like not jealousy, or are, are you looking? I want to be there, or are you just proud to see somebody represent the league at, at that level? No, it's always good to see uh, a League of Ireland player in, in the Ireland squad, of course, because. It just it goes to show that there's always a pathway there, no matter no matter what. So, I mean, Stephen Kenny's obviously he's big into the league. Ron, he's had a lot of experience there. So, uh, and as well as that, I've seen him at a lot of games this season too. So, yeah, it's good to see, and uh, you're just happy to see see these lads doing well. And obviously, Graham Burke's been in it in the past, so I think he scored as well. Uh, if I, I'm not too sure, but. They, they tend to do well when they when they step in so um yeah it's always great to see because as i said there's it goes to show that there's there's a platform there yeah uh, if you have a question send it on there's no, no problem dara will answer absolutely anything at all uh, <laughs> um <laughs> when you look when you look at the league now when you started is it a stronger league now than than it was or could you see that it was it was strengthening because for us we see it as a stronger league as a fan as a supporter as someone who watches games week in week out and watch different teams we see it as a stronger league but you be playing in it so how does it feel when you're playing in it yeah it probably is it's more there's more quality teams like everyone's beating each other now you know so uh as to previous years maybe not but one Another thing I'll say is the Dundalk team when I when I first came in was probably the strongest team I've, I've played against. I don't think uh, don't think Rovers are at, are at that level, but um, that Dundalk team obviously done serious things in Europe and in the Europa League. Uh, I'd say that's that's one difference. But like it's a more enjoyable league to play in. Everyone's beating each other, and it's just so interesting to see the league table every week just always changing. Um, and as I've said, that's only because there's more quality in each in each team. So uh, every game is is tough as as to in previous years. As someone like Pat, you're probably expected to go and and thump a few teams, but uh, I don't think that 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 happens too often now now in the league of Ireland. Yeah, I asked. I had Adam Foley on the show here on Friday night. I asked him a question. Now he's a few years on you, all right. So don't, don't don't worry too much about this one. But I did ask him when he looked back at his fifteen-year-old self. All right. Now that's not too long for you. But when you look back at fifteen-year-old, what advice would you give yourself then, if you could now? So if you had that advice that you could give as a fifteen-year-old, what would you give yourself? Uh... To be honest, I'm kind of happy with the pathway I did take when I was 15 years old. So, um, I don't know. I suppose the the main thing for me has always been to just enjoy it and and um, never stop enjoying it because that's the most important thing and it's the best thing 
there is when you're enjoying your football. So to uh, if I was giving it to any other 15 year old, I'd always say that and not to get caught up on, you know, like I suppose when I was 15, everyone was big on the, the trials to England and getting mm -hmm. yourself a move and stuff like that. But it, it just, it doesn't, it's not the be all and end all. And that's for sure. Cause you see, as, as we've said already, the, the, um, that pathway doesn't seem to be the most successful. I don't think. And, it, it kind of leaves you you're not you're not happy with yourself when when if that doesn't work out so i'd say that's probably anything i'd say to another 15 year old where just don't get caught up on these things because i've seen a lot of late developers as well where people even when they're 20 years old they just all of a sudden turn into a serious footballer just from doing the extras and um still building themselves up you know and uh it's just everyone does these things at different stages so it's there's never a rush you know when you're 15 or when you're 20 just don't get caught up on them things do you feel that there's at that age 15 16 do you feel that there's a lot of pressure from the schoolboy clubs to push yourself to go on and you know make it with the with the big teams to push yourself to go on trials uh, I don't, I don't know where the pressure comes from, but there, there does seem to be, be a bit of pressure there. I remember that. I don't know. It's just there was just a bit of competitiveness there, where you always wanted to be going on trial and stuff like that. But I don't think it comes from, from the clubs. It's, I don't know. It's a hard one, but uh, I mean, my my cherry orchard team. There was never, you know, there was never coaches or anything pressuring you that you need to, you need to go away and stuff like that there was always just is well, it just the fact that you were with the club cherry orchard who have sent at the time were sending player or players were going away an awful lot so if you were going to join cherry orchard that was nearly the natural path yeah yeah that's that's true uh obviously there was some serious players in that team so they were going away and, and maybe that's where it came from where everyone just wants to give just compete and do do what what the other lads are doing, but uh, maybe that's what what that bit of pressure came from. But as I've said, it never comes from the Dublin clubs or the coaches or stuff like that. Well, from my experience at Cherry Orchard, anyways, it was probably just a bit of competitiveness from yourselves at in the squad where you want to do as well as someone else is doing. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. There, there wasn't too much pressure on things like that. It was just mainly going out and, and taking the game by game, even at that level, and trying to to win your your Premier Leagues and your your All Irelands and stuff like that. And obviously, if you if you do well in these things, you get your rewards, you get your trials and stuff. But I don't know. There wasn't too much pressure on on getting moves away and stuff. Okay. More of a, more of a competitive element rather yeah. than pressure. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, right. Uh, good man, Killian. You're keeping us going here. Uh, this is the toughest player you've ever marked in the League of Ireland. That may just be the toughest player that you've ever played against in your position. That you know, uh, that could that could be a, that could be a, a central defender or a midfielder. I suppose depends who's kicking you up and down the pitch. <laughs> it feels like a, obviously probably Chris Shields been is really tough to play against. Uh, He's got legs and he doesn't give you a second on the ball. Uh, I think I enjoyed playing against Bashan here as well uh, a few times where he's really skillful and strong and stuff like that. And you enjoy it, but at the same time, you're not enjoying it because cause, uh, it's, a, it's a tough task. Uh, but yeah, a lot of, lot of talented players in the league. And I suppose for me it's it's probably coming against up against a, a defensive midfielder where, where that's where i'd get the my toughest opponent but uh there's obviously talented like attacking players like duffy and and, and plenty of others uh i would play against daryl horgan who was was so good as well uh richie tell and stuff so um yeah but personally like individually as a battle probably chris shields and, and bashing here i suppose yeah, um, uh, there's listen. There's there's some quality defensive midfielders in there that would uh, it, it makes that very difficult uh, in the game now because they always have two sitting midfielders. A lot of teams have two sitting midfielders. So how do you 
how do you find the space then to 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 drag players out of there? What's your thought process in a game when, when you're playing the game? You have two sitting midfielders. One is fine, but if there's two sitting and you have the the banks of four, um, what do you do? We've seen it in the, the where, what game was it in the, the Champions League final where City couldn't get through, Man City couldn't get through at all because and Fernandez, De Bruyne, Fernandez from Man United, De Bruyne, the all type of players. If they if there's two banks of four, find it very hard, and they're the, they're the top 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 players. How do you find it when? Or what do you do to try and get yourself that space? Well, if they can't do, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. well, uh, I suppose. Do so you get frustrated often, like in, in those t- type of scenarios? You know, because it's very easy to drift out of a game if that's the scenario. Yeah, it probably is, and. Uh, I don't know if, if many teams in the league actually do play two two sit midfielders. I'm not too sure. I can't I can't remember to be honest where I found that where I was up against two two defensive midfielders. But I suppose the best way to, to try and do any is, is just to to move the the opposition and just keep moving the ball. Hopefully, we'd have two attacking midfielders then as well, where we stay high and uh, try and play on the shoulders of them two, two defensive midfielders. And then someone like Gary Deegan getting on the ball, and he's then has to try and play in between the lines at, at pace, which is obviously a really hard thing to do as well. Mm. Um, the real answer, the real answer was give it to James Brown. That's what the answer was. <laughs> just, just you failed up. there. You failed there. It's not all about you. <laughs> this was every week, Darren. This every week, James Brown gets a mention at least three times. Like it's. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I think I started off actually. I, I, I mentioned him once or twice, and then that's it. Roy just took the ball and, and he just just ran with it. Now it's it's getting out of hand. <laughs> Um, um what, what is the club like because it's isn't it it's great to to have uh the, the crowds are starting to come back what's it like up in in Drogheda compared to pats and i'm not asking to say one is shit and one is great or whatever like that but just because there's a lot of community in in the league of ireland clubs there's a lot of community people in it what what kind of uh people you don't see for you know behind the scenes and what have you what kind of people are up there in, in Drogheda? Yeah, great people. Uh, a lot of volunteers that I've met, uh, and there's probably more that I, I haven't even met so far. But um, coming into training every day, there's two COVID officers who who come in and um, really welcoming. And uh, there's on match day then there's other volunteers who who you talk to and stuff, and everyone's really friendly. They they just welcome you as well. Uh, the chairman, I, I speak to. I've spoken to a fair bit as well, and he's he's trying to help me on on the job front too to try and and uh, secure even a part time job or something like that, which mm. which looks like I, I could get soon. So just uh, everyone's from the chairman up down to um, the COVID officers, the players, and everyone just just everyone knows each other. And uh, I wouldn't that's probably that's probably the same at past though. Like mm. it was a really good family club and everyone was was really friendly as well the volunteers and so i've probably been lucky where the the two clubs i've been at where everyone's just there's a lot of togetherness in in both clubs and uh, i wouldn't say in that aspect there, there'd be too much difference to be honest because um you like uh, there's just so many friendly faces around around both both clubs mm-hmm. One thing, tell us. This is probably we're getting near the end. One thing that would you would put in place that would make the League of Ireland uh, a better league. Uh, I, I'd like to think. I'd like to see the watch LOI stay. Uh, yeah, I think that's been good for the league. The, the coverage and stuff like that has been a lot better. Um, because previously you you wouldn't have seen seen a lot of things that happen in the league like goals and they're getting put onto social media as soon as they're they're putting the net nowadays yeah. uh, as long as that doesn't affect the crowds obviously because that that could happen uh people might stay at home and stuff but um i think that's probably probably something that i'd like to see most where 
uh, there's more coverage and stuff because a lot of good things happen in the league and people are maybe starting to notice that where goals, some good quality goals are, are put in and there's good quality uh, football being played. So maybe that could even attract more fans as well. So um, that'd well, be that's, just... that's something now that you're just after saying you've, you've taken the words out of my mouth. I mean, I think LOI TV or Watch LOI has done wonders for getting football out there and showing people, as you said, I can look at my phone, go on to maybe Facebook, SSC Electricity League page, and I can see three or four goals from the other games that I would never have gotten to see only for it. And social media plays a huge part of it. I think, yeah. isn't Lewis Shaw, Shaw is up in, with Jews in yeah. Rohada? Yeah. And he does a lot of work now, especially he has his own Facebook group that uh, is brilliant, you know, and he's spreading the word with, with the club, but that not just the club, but the league. But LOI TV is adding to that now. And it's something that we talked about, Nathan, wasn't it? Like, yeah. We were never ever happy with how RTE sort of did the League of Ireland, how they kind of put the stuff across. Uh, we always thought that, you know, the highlights on a Monday night, people didn't really care about it on a Monday night because they've kind of half seen it, half heard yeah. about it. Maybe there was something on, you know, one of the pages where you've seen a goal or you've read about it 10 times before Monday came along. And then you might get to see one game every other week or every two, three weeks or whatever. So, I think LOI, Nathan, LOI TV is, is something that we want to see getting bigger and better. Yeah, and it's it's good to see that the clubs have, have an involvement with the own production and, and how that, that sort of thing is going to work as well. Because like you were saying, everything with RTE has just been just probably half-arsed, for lack of a better term. It's Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it is. It's it's kicking off now on Friday. Like I was saying, clubs, they have their own production, their own commentators, uh, better analysis because... It's badly needed, you know. We've even talked about Soccer Republic uh, going by the wayside now. And, but even on, uh, probably for the last year of Soccer Republic as well, that was just horrendous to watch. And the Monday night death slot just does not no favours whatsoever. So, yeah, it, these are all things that are badly needed. And you need to stay even after COVID and when crowds do come back. And like I said, there, like, it's, you, you hope it doesn't affect crowds. But we have a lot of fans as well that live abroad and you can feel disconnected to the lake. So to have yeah. these things for, for people like that, it's absolutely vital. Yeah. You get... Go on, go ahead. Sorry, there. I Just as I was saying, the crowds thing, it, it could it could work either way. Maybe it could yeah. even it could bring more more fans through, through the gate. So uh, it'd be interesting to see, see how it works. Is there much interaction between fans and uh players in Drogheda like do you do you guess much I know it's hard with COVID and all but even if you're around the town or anything like that is, is there I'd love to see where you know the likes of Sligo Drogheda and you know there's jerseys and windows and you know I've always I wouldn't say jealous of the GAA but I've always looked at the GAA and thought you know they're all following their county they're all mm. I'd love to see that where Drogheda, the whole town is out behind them all the time. You see Sligo now, they're actually starting to build that where there's a good fan base in Sligo and in around that town, Nathan will t tell yeah. you that it's, there is a bit of a buzz. Uh, can can you feel that around Drogheda? Could you feel it or with Pats? Is, the, is that something that the cl clubs probably need to work keep working on? Uh, I th I think clubs are are doing their best to be to be fair. I think draw the social media and stuff like that. The community, they're all doing their they're definitely doing their best to bring to bring that togetherness between the fans and the players and stuff like that. Obviously, it's it's tough at the minute because we can't really interact. Um, but I, I think the best thing you can do is is just get get as good results as you can because. Sligo probably haven't been great in previous years, and now now they're top of the league, and all of, all of a sudden there's a there's a great buzz around the place, and they'll probably get when fans do come back, they'll probably have a full house again because when they were up and up and around the top of the league, and a few years ago the 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 crowd was always great, so I think the best thing you can do is just try and and give get the best results for for the club and. I think that'll bring bring fans in, and it was probably the same with Dundalk as well when when they were up up and challenging every year and in in the Europa League. I don't, I don't think they they would have got that much people in when they were near relegation, you know, and 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 down down near the bottom of the table every year. So, um, I think Drogheda, I think 
there seems to be a good buzz around the place. Obviously, momentum is, is really high at the minute because they've just got promoted and the team is, is in the European spot at the minute. So I'm sure if, if fans were allowed in, and I, I know there's, I think there's 100 being let in or something, maybe 200 being let in this week. So um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people really looking forward to uh, to entering the gates and, and we'll be looking forward to having them there as well. And hopefully we can put on a show and that will just attract more people as well. Will your ultras still stay down the far corner with their fans? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I'm still new to the place, so I don't actually know where, where, where they go and stuff like that. But uh, it's always great to have, you know, people like that with the flares and stuff, no matter what the circumstances are. So, um, but yeah, we'll we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Uh, listen, no doubt about the season so far. Drogheda and, as you said, Finn Harps, they've been a breath of fresh air because. First of all, the football uh, from both, uh, especially Drogheda. I've enjoyed watching Drogheda. Anytime you'd be looking at, watch LOI and you'd switch over. There's a, there are a couple of games you can watch. And anytime you switch over to Drogheda, there was always a good brand of football. The, the ball's always moving quickly. It's always, uh, as I said, fullbacks bombing on forward, linking up with your, the likes of yourself and uh, Gary Deegan in midfield. And uh, I, just, I just like the, the style of football that Drogheda have. As you said, Finn Harps, have improved so much that it's great to watch them now. And I think the league as a, as a, there's very few boring teams. And I think the only team at the moment for me, and you don't have to, you don't have to answer this at all, but the only team for me at the moment is Waterford who are struggling badly out of their own, uh, through their own demise and, and, and probably not looking after themselves, but the league so far, the brand of football has been really, really good. So, uh, yourself, Drogheda and everyone else up there, keep that up, all right? And uh, yeah. tell James we've been caught or been asking for him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> tell him to answer his messages because he's been mesh he's meshing them like a town old fashion. All right. No, he's he's to come on the show, all right, grad. And he has to sing a tune. <laughs> okay, listen. Dara, thanks very much for your time. Uh, I really appreciate that and everyone else does as well. Uh, best of luck for the new season. Thanks very much. Thanks for having Cheers. me. Thanks.